Imagine waking up one morning to find your country run by a brutal military dictatorship. Your democratically elected leaders arrested. Protesters shot in the streets. A once promising future hijacked overnight. This is the reality for the people of Myanmar. But amidst the chaos, an unlikely hero has emerged to lead the resistance. Tun Myat Nang, the scholar turned revolutionary. Myanmar has long been plagued by conflict and authoritarian rule. For decades, the military has waged a war against ethnic minorities, violently suppressing any dissent. But in 2015, hope abounded as the National League for Democracy, led by Aung San Suu Kyi, swept to victory in landmark elections. Suu Kyi has been fighting for democracy and equal rights in Myanmar for decades, winning the Nobel Peace Prize in 1991. But her democratic progress was shattered on February 1, 2021, when General Min Aung Lang seized power in a coup d'etat, arresting Suu Kyi and plunging Myanmar back into dictatorship. Since then, Lang's junta has unleashed a reign of terror, massacring protesters, jailing thousands, and bombing civilian areas. Over 5,000 have been killed, with millions displaced. But Lang, a hardcore nationalist steeped in the Tamadao's brutality, shows no mercy. To him, there is no room for compromise with those he calls terrorists. Yet the people of Myanmar refuse to submit. A nationwide civil disobedience movement has brought the economy to its knees. And in the borderlands, long persecuted ethnic armies are fighting back. Among them is the Arakan Army, a once obscure group that has become the junta's worst nightmare. At its helm is Tan Myat Nang, a bespectacled intellectual who looks like an unlikely resistance leader. Growing up in Rakhine State, Nang witnessed the Tamadao's savagery firsthand. A student of philosophy, history, and political science, he knows oppression must be met with both force and vision. In 2009, he co-founded the Arakan Army, recruiting disaffected Arakanese Buddhists to defend their homeland. It's important to note that despite their shared desire for greater political freedom in Myanmar, Nang and Suu Kyi have had a complex and sometimes adversarial relationship. In 2020, Suu Kyi's government designated the Arakan Army a terrorist organization. Their goals differ. Suu Kyi works for a democracy that respects the rights of all ethnic groups, while Nang is focused on the rights and autonomy of the Rakhine people. Many believe Suu Kyi lost her human rights credentials when her government remained silent in 2017, while the military carried out an ethnic cleansing of the minority Muslim Rohingya people in Nang's Rakhine state. Under Nang's brilliant leadership, the Arakan army has won stunning victories. His strategic mind and tireless organizing have helped build a potent coalition called the Three Brotherhood Alliance, which now spearheads the resistance. In a daring move, the Alliance launched Operation 1027 in October of 23, staging lightning attacks on the junta and its allies in northern Shan state. They overran scores of outposts, and in a humiliating blow to the junta, seized the notorious Luque base in January 2024, a haven for Chinese crime lords and their military partners. Emboldened by the Alliance's success, other militias have made gains in Kayan, Chin, and Rakhine states. The Arakan Army's seizure of a key township on Ramri Island, next to a strategic Chinese-developed port, and their advance to the outskirts of the Rakhine capital, Sitwe, have sent shockwaves through the junta leadership. Nang's political vision is democratic and inclusive. He has embraced ethnic minorities like the long-oppressed Rohingya. He has forged ties with the National Unity Government, Myanmar's government in exile, which has many members from Suu Kyi's party. The junta's response has been brutal. Indiscriminate shelling of civilians in Ramri and near Sitwe showed the depths of their cruelty. But army morale is crumbling, with many defecting or fleeing conscription orders. The junta's grip on the border is slipping, cutting off vital funding from tax collection and criminal rackets. The clash between Min Ong Lang and Tan Myat Nang will shape the lives of millions. If Lang succeeds in crushing the resistance, he would rule unchallenged over a shattered nation. But Nang and his allies remain undaunted. They know they're fighting not just for territory, but for the future of Myanmar. Every Arakan has uh, a dream in their heart. One day, they should become a free citizen of uh, our fatherland. My message to Nepidor and Burmese army is we will never 
ever give up. We will fight on till we achieve our objective. Guided by Nang's vision, Myanmar's people dare to dream of a country finally free from oppression. <laughs> <laughs>